Coming up on Survivor TV, she's a Southern Cali girl who calls New York City home, but she's a health educator who's gonna tell us why knowing your HPV facts are so important. Welcome to Survivor TV. I'm Tamika Felder, and today I'm so excited to have Dr. Michelle Prigo with us. Hi. Hi. So, you have an interesting story. You are a case study for why HPV testing works. That's right. Tell me about how you got diagnosed with HPV. Sure. So, I had always gone for my pap test every single year. It had never been bad. And it was only when I started with a new doctor who told me about the co-testing that I was alerted to that a co-testing even existed. And it really brought to my attention that the other doctors I had seen hadn't mentioned it. So all that time I was relying on them to make sure I was healthy, mm -hmm. there was a piece of information missing, and because I didn't know about it, I was missing out on doing my part to make sure I could be healthy. But luckily for you, you had a doctor who was really proactive and up on the newest and latest technology. That's right. And so she did the test, and even though the pap came back normal like it always had, the test came back positive for the cancerous strains. And that really brought to my attention that it was kind of this illusion I had had that I had always had perfect health, that actually maybe I didn't have perfect health. And that it, it blew my mind. I, when she called me with the results, I, I was like, are you sure? She, maybe we should run the test again. Because I didn't know much about HPV, and I thought, well, I feel fine. I don't have any symptoms. Like, I don't think this is right. But it was right. So you said something interesting. There was something that was negative, but something else that was positive. That's right. So the pap test was, when they say normal, which is the same thing as saying negative, um, but I was positive for the, for the virus, for the strains that can cause cancer. And that it sent me you know, right to the internet, which is both good and bad. But I just, I didn't understand how you, know, you could be negative and positive at the same time, like you were right. saying. And it just sent me down this rabbit hole of information that I really did not understand how HPV worked. I, you know, we know it's a virus, we know it's sexually transmitted, but Beyond that, like I just didn't really understand how it worked, but luckily my doctor did, and she really took the time to explain it to me. Which is wonderful, so yes. kudos to your doctor. Yes. So with all that information and having such a great doctor, it must have been hard how did you feel being diagnosed with something that had such a stigma surrounding it? At first I felt surprised because I thought I had, with all the information that I thought was the current information I had available, I was surprised that I had caught an STD because I thought I was doing everything I could not to get an STD. Like limited number of partners, make sure I use a condom. You were married. And at the time I was and still am, yeah. um, married, which I really thought that STDs were something that maybe I wouldn't have had to worry about before I was married, sure. but I was long since married, been with the same man for many moons, and I just thought, well, I don't understand how could this be? Like, where did this come from? And my doctor explained to me how HPV lays dormant for so many years, and the likelihood of it actually coming from my husband was actually quite slim because it takes so long, and we hadn't been together that long, and so I probably caught it long before him, which then brought me to the kind of stigma of it because I thought, when I have to tell my husband, I have an STD and it probably isn't from you. So that's, that's what I was going to ask. How, what was that <laughs> conversation like? So, I mean, my husband's the absolute nicest person. Like, the nicest, nicest, nicest person. And so I knew I wouldn't have to be fearful of, you know, a repercussion or name calling or any of those things that unfortunately many women do experience. But just sure. having that conversation, like, honey, I have something to tell you. I went to the doctor and not only do we maybe have this bad health problem we have to deal with, it's probably from someone or something I did before I met you. But his first response was, well, maybe I gave this to you. 
Mm. Like really accepting the ownership, which was just made me cry on the spot. Right. But when I explained to him how it works, I was like, I don't think it's from you. (laughs) 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 So he said, well, you know, I heard about the vaccine. Like, let's get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Like, what do we do? Like, he was really, let's take action. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I'm too old for the vaccine. And at the time, there was no vaccine for men. And he said, well, how do I get tested? You know, he was really involved and really wanted to, you know, get to the, you know, get to the solution and just put it behind us. I said, well, there's no test for men. I was like, well, then what? You just have this, I give it to you, you give it to me. Like, that's not, that's not a solution. Like, he was very... So he just wanted to help. He wanted to just help. Like, and just find a solution and just, you know, move forward. And it was, it was great. It was a perfect response. I think the stigma of HPV hurts the prevention of cervical cancer. I would absolutely agree. After I'd had my experience, I started, you know, speaking with my girlfriends and a lot of them had similar experiences and, you know, we both looked at each other and thought, why is nobody talking about this? Exactly. And, you know, the response was, well, you know, how do you start that conversation? Like, hey, guess what? I have an STD. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> what about you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, even like, you know, your closest friend, right. it's not going to be something that you just randomly share, you know, over a cocktail in a movie. And it's, people can be so judgmental. And people can be so judgmental. And, you know, in my circle of friends, you know, it was a very tight knit circle. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in some cases, there was, you know, some overlapping of partners over the span of, mm-hmm. you know, several years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you start to connect the dots and you, you don't want to connect those dots because because of the stigma. You don't want to end up pointing fingers like, oh, well, you were with that person. And then years later, I was with that person, too. Like, so maybe so it's really about normalizing it. And instead of having to be like an STD, it's something that can give you cancer. And by focusing on the like the, the cancerous possible outcome, it normalizes it as like a public health issue instead of like right. a personal like sexual health issue. And I think that's what's most important is normalizing it. So you've taken everything that you've experienced and you've turned it into an action for awareness and prevention. That's right. So I, you know, every person I meet, I, I tell my story. I don't necessarily frame it in in a way that's like, you should go get your pap test because I don't feel qualified to, you know, like direct someone to seek care. But I say, if you're going to be, you know, having sex or if you are going to the doctor, like these are questions you should be asking. You know, I didn't know about the co-testing. I had to wait for someone to introduce me to it. And in that time, my my pre-cancer cells were advancing and advancing and nobody knew. But if I had known, I would have said something sooner. Like, I'm the type of person, I would have gone to my doctor and I would have said something. And so just really empowering people to speak up for themselves and also knowing which test to ask for when. You know, the, the DNA test is for women who are 30 and older. And, you know, I'm over 30, so most of my friends are over 30. And I tell them, you know, did you know about this other test? No, I had no idea. You should know about this test. Right. So it's not so much that I'm, like, pushing them to make a doctor's appointment because I don't really feel comfortable doing that. But I do tell them that if you are going to the doctor, you should be asking these questions. And if you're not going to the doctor because you don't have insurance or you're not comfortable or for a myriad of reasons, like this is what you need to know about how the virus works so you can protect yourself to the utmost extent. And that's kind of my, my advocacy message. Thank you for sharing your survivor story. Thank you, Tamika. You know we're all survivors, and that's what Survivor TV is all about. Continue to join us each week and don't forget to log on to survivor.org and join our email list.